Hello everyone, welcome back to KXA in Live. I'm Esmeralda Zamora and today we have our Space Space segment with our KXA in reporter Eric Henriksen. Eric, how are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous. It's a great day. It's a beautiful Tuesday outside. It's a nice day. We're going to talk about something fun and interesting. Yeah, and we've got that warm weather. Just right. like the weather is probably really warm on Mars. So <laughs> Ooh, twist. It's not it's actually very cold on Mars. It's cold on it's Mars. It's cold, no atmosphere to hold in the heat, so it's it's super, super cold. Mm, I guess yeah. the color made me think of like warm. Right. And it's it's this we're, let's, let's jump right in. Let's talk about Mars facts. <laughs> uh it's really cold and the atmosphere is very thin compared to Earth. So you you don't get uh like when you have like windstorms and things, mm -hmm. you you know, you see like the Martian where these big windstorms come in, but because the atmosphere is so thin, those windstorms well they look big. They're not the same amount of force as we get on Earth, so oh, pretty so cool. So it looks big, but it's not really right. Crazy. It's really impressive to look at, but not <laughs> as dangerous as the Martian made it out to be. Still yeah. dangerous, but not not as dangerous. Well, we have a couple of volunteers that are going to be learning this <laughs> right. firsthand, right? What can you tell us about these volunteers and what they're going to be doing? So they are going to be doing a test Mars mission. So this is part of the Hera project, which is the Human Exploration Research Analog. It's this little facility you're seeing on screen right now. It's located at Johnson Space Flight Center in Houston. And what's really cool about it is it's a way for us to test, can we survive isolated for long stretches of time? There it is. That's the outside. It's two stories, 650 square feet. Uh, it has a loft. It, <laughs> that's, that was one of the things I was looking at the, the details on NASA's website. And they're like, well, it has a loft. Whatever. Well, that's cool. I'll so, stay in there. <laughs> right. Like, let's do it. It's 45 days. These these volunteers will be staying in this pod. Now, this has been done for years now, but we're testing how long people can function, how they function in extreme isolation, and can they still accomplish tasks. So we've we've done crews recently. This is the newest set of crew. Uh, they'll be in there for 45 days, wow. uh, starting November 1st. So great way to spend their holidays, I guess. <laughs> And do these um, volunteers get chosen randomly? Are they um, astronauts? Are they scientists? These are all well, kind of a mixture of things, I guess. And then you have to submit. You you could you could volunteer. All you have to do is submit an application to NASA. The ones we have this year, I have the information right here. Uh, t one of them is from the United Arab Emirates. He's an engineer. His name is Obadi Al Suwadi. Kristen Magas is a teacher at Tri-County Regional Vocational Technical School in Franklin, Massachusetts. She was a finalist for Teacher of the Year for 2025. Uh, Tiffany Snyder works for NASA. She's in the Cybersecurity Mission Integration Office. She's in IT. She's been there since 2018. And Anderson Wilder is a grad student. He's working on his doctorate at Florida Institute of Technology. He's studying amongst uh, psychology and other issues. Uh, space flight, how it contributes to neurobehavioral changes in astronauts. So they're they're kind of all a mixture of things. It is a volunteer. Uh, there's some footage of some animations of Mars and stuff, <laughs> so you get an idea of what Mars is like. But they'll and there's also two alternate crew members in case something happens to the other four. Uh, but yeah, they're all they're all volunteering to go test themselves and see what it's like to to live on Mars in this pod. So the idea is that when we do reach Mars, there'll be habitats. In fact, we're we're building or designing habitats for the Moon right now. Uh, but when we get to Mars, we're going to be there longer stretches, and we need to, and we need to kind of hang out there. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Inside our, this instead. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll have long periods of time that we'll be sitting there and enjoying Mars' atmosphere and the planet and being on Mars. And so we need a place to stay. And so this is kind of our test facility of what that would be like to put four people in a small small space, 650 square feet, pretty small. Well, aboard this, over this 45 days, they're not just going to sit around and do nothing. They'll be doing science experiments. Uh, the ones I like, they'll be growing vegetables. They're going to be uh, raising shrimp. Uh, shrimp? Yeah. But you have, <laughs> it, I think about it this way. If you're in space for long periods of time, you're going to need a way to get a hold of food. Mm -hmm. And raising shrimp is one way to do that. Growing vegetables is another. And they'll be doing some various experiments. One thing I thought was fun is they'll be doing... Virtual reality walks on Mars. They'll wear goggles and pretend to walk on Mars <laughs> outside. So they get to experience what the outside of Mars would be like. So it's a, it's a great test to see, hey, what can we push humans mentally to the limits of? So talk to me a little bit about the difference between actually being on Mars and what they're going to be experiencing. In well, this. the big one is if they panic, they can walk 20 feet and they are <laughs> back in the real world. On Mars, it's a several-month trip, I believe it's a six-month trip to reach Mars. And then once you're there, you're there. 
and you're there. You can't really get out, you know. Mm -hmm. So the next thing you could do is come back, and that's another six-month trip. And, and usually, like we saw with the Boeing astronauts who launched earlier this year, it's not as simple as, I want to go home, let me just hop on a rocket and go home. You have to wait for launch windows. We're talking about orbital dynamics. So the planets are spinning, they're all orbiting the sun, and if you want to make the trip in the fastest time possible, you have to kind of schedule your trip and plan it so that you reach Earth with the least amount of fuel used. So if there's a problem, they have to wait, and that's going to be difficult. So most likely they're going to be staying there for long stretches of time, planning these trips out. Planning these trips out takes long, long hours. It's not as simple as, I'm going to go to Mars and we'll launch. It's it's getting the fuel ready, it's getting the food ready, it's being able to do these things once we get there, and then be able to get back. So these long stretches of time. So in this facility, they're getting the, the feeling of being isolated, but they're not truly yeah, isolated. Not they can fully isolated. And there is an emergency. There's there's an escape hatch. If we go to Mars, when we go to Mars, then probably in the next decade or so, <laughs> if if NASA succeeds in their plans, then, yeah, once we're there, we're, we're there. I mean, it's kind of the same way with the International Space Station. Once we're in space, we're in space. Yeah. Not a whole lot of getting back until it's time to get back, which, like again, we saw with the Boeing astronauts earlier this year. The other thing is, like I said, the atmosphere is different. The environment's different. Gravity on Earth is different. Gravity on Mars is less than gravity on Earth, so you're going to experience muscle loss, bone loss, uh, these densities that we, we have currently. The bone density you have currently is going to decrease over time. Humans will have to adapt to that over time, but we're going to see what that's like to live there for six months. It's not as big of a difference as if if we are staying on the International Space Station for six, seven, eight months. But on top of that, you do have to travel to Mars, which is a six-month journey. So six months there in low gravity, dealing with all the physical demands that causes, the time on Mars, and then six months back. So we're talking about a full year trip with some time in the middle to actually be on the planet. And that's going to have an impact on your on the human body that's staying in this facility on Earth, in Earth's atmosphere, on with Earth's gravity, does not. Wow. So um, when do these individuals start their journey in this simulation, and uh, how long is it going to last? So they'll start on November 1st. It's a 45-day event for them. They'll be locked away for 45 days, and they get free, and they'll, the whole time they'll be reporting <laughs> what they're going through with NASA. This is all part of, it's part of their human, what's called? Research, human research. Human research program. And so this is the program where we're studying how humans interact with space with NASA. They're looking at a few different things, which I think is kind of interesting. Testing how humans perform in space. What happens when we're in space? We need to do medicine. What can we do with that? Exploring the impacts of space flight on the human body. This is less on that, obviously. Um, the mental faculties that space takes to function in space, to be isolated in that way. Counteracting space radiation is another thing that group kind of looks at. So they're looking at all the different health aspects of traveling in space, mental and physical health. Wow. And so this is all part of this process. And so they'll do a lot of cataloging and journaling and saying where their mind's at. I don't know if uh, you remember, you probably do, COVID, when we were all isolated in the first few months of COVID, I realized that I could not do this. I'm, I need people. I need to be able to move around. I'm not a person who can be isolated very much. As soon as we were back in the office, I was back in the office. I was locked in a room behind a piece of glass, but I was back in the office. I was around other people. I, I need a, I can't do isolation like this, but some people can, and this is a way to see who, who can do it and who can't. Yeah, during COVID, I was on FaceTime every single day because right. I needed to speak with someone. So I don't know how they're going to do it, but I'm sure they have each other. Right, and they're gonna, they'll be able to communicate, too. They're not going to be completely cut off. And just like on Mars, there is a five, this is, I think, it's cool. There's going to be a five-minute communication delay in their communications to the outside world, <laughs> just like there would be with Mars. Yeah. So they'll send a message, and then five minutes later, they'll get the response. And <laughs> email will be the best way to communicate, not FaceTime in, the, in their case. But yeah, it's they'll be able to talk to people but there will be a bit of a bit of delay a thing. yeah a bit, a of, bit delay. of a delay yeah just like in real life yeah i i i discovered very quickly during covid i need to be i'm a face to face person and i i definitely get a little ocd when i'm isolated in that way i got a lot of work done i'll say yeah. that but i think if i was going to space i'd probably get a lot of work done but i'd, I'd burn out pretty quickly so <laughs> well talk to me about this article that we have here on our website. What can we find here on this article? I got a little more information on all the volunteers, information on the program in general. Um, I got through some cool pictures of Mars because there's always cool pictures of Mars. I know it's kind of empty and 
and empty. But it's neat. Those are the the four volunteers right there. I also mentioned the two uh, follow the the two alternates and a little bit more information on the human resource program or human research program. So a little more information on that. And there's there's a nice photo of the Hera of where they're gonna live. Of where they're gonna live. It looks <laughs> delightful, doesn't it? It looks like an apartment in downtown Austin. Yep. So it's six hundred fifty square feet. Size. Yeah, it's about the same size. <laughs> If you can do that with four or three other people, good good luck. You can probably do this program too. Would you ever volunteer to do this program? No, I don't think I would. <laughs> I, I I would definitely go to space short term. I would definitely isolate like that short term. But yeah. you wouldn't want like a preparation before heading out there. I think I would just go. I think <laughs> I definitely panic when the roller coaster is clicking up the hill. And not so much once it's plummeting. Usually I have a good time once the plummet starts. So I think I would just go and not do the, the pre-isolation mm. and just experience it. The scariest part to me about going to space is the rocket they launch you on. Just sitting on the top of a giant explosion and going up. That's the scariest part to me. <laughs> or not, coming back. That's the scariest part to me. The part, Coming back doesn't scare me as much. Although that's usually when all the bad stuff happens. So that should be the... <laughs> That should be the scarier part, I guess. That, there's, that's something to keep in mind. But yeah, I, I'd love to go to space. I don't think I could do long term though. I know mm -hmm. I, I, I guess I can't isolate that long. And yeah, I got family, and I just got a new puppy, so I'm dealing with Duh. all that. So I kind of be away from the, the dogs and the family and all that. So yeah, what can you do? Yeah, well, hopefully one day we can take everyone up there. And oh, fingers enjoy it crossed! Together. I would love to take one of the, like the Virgin Galactic flights that go up. I'd love to do one of those. That'd yeah, be really that'd fun. be awesome. Well, thank you, Eric, for sharing this wonderful story. If anyone is interested in reading up on it, like we showed you, it's on our website kxn.com with more details and photos for anyone to look at. Fantastic! Thank, thank you for you, having Eric. me. And that's all we have here for the space space on this Tuesday morning. Remember, we'll have some more streams later on today and into the rest of the week. Don't forget to join us and tune in on air as well. Thanks so much. Esmeralda Zamora.